she's alive, the, the goblin's alive. And I don't know why I said that. It just felt right for it. Okay, so it's nothing like a modern car. It's a clunky car. It's a farm truck. It always was. <laughs> My name's Mick Hewitt and uh, I live in Milton Keynes. I've been in a hot rod game for years. Um, and this is my truck. It's a 56 Chevy pickup, but with a 57 front on it. My father worked on cars with a little back street garage back, home, uh, back in Dartford. And yeah, I was always tinkering around the garage, borrowing his tools, which he didn't like. I bought a 100E, I converted that to a V6 auto, Jag rear end, uh, Capri front, never finished it. Sold it for 500 quid, biggest mistake of my life. So cars have been me from, from, from early on. About three, four years back now, I bought the truck. Uh, the truck was going to be a driver. That's all I wanted. Just to buy it, drive it, fix it as I'm driving it. But the brakes were so bad, you couldn't stop. The engine was only running on seven cylinders and the steering was atrocious. Uh, had some bodywork issues, so that had to be addressed. And it became frame off restoration. Went a bit silly, brand new engine, brand new gearbox. It's got a 383 in it, turbo 350 box, um, GM back end, and a Camaro front clip on it. Biggest mistake I made at that point was leaving the steering box. Should have gone for rack and pinion, which I have now ordered. It's in the country, and I will fit that to make the steering a lot better. Well, it was green to start with when I bought it. I didn't really like the green, but I didn't want to move away from green. I felt the car looked good in green. I'm not sure what green I wanted. I wanted something a bit of sparkle in it. Um, and it does in the sun, it really does pop. But I was at a friend of mine who's got a paint shop and I went through his colour cards and just went through the greens until I found a green I liked. And this says now, it's an old Land Rover colour called Aquamarine. I've never seen it on the Land Rover, but that's apparently what it was. Uh, and yeah, I love the colour, I love the colour. A good friend of mine, Rob Tarrington, he, he painted it for me. Uh, I can't paint, he can. We knew we would have to do the bottom cab corners, rear cab corners, they were terrible. The sills had actually gone as well. The bottom six inches of both doors had to be replaced. Both front fenders are new. One of the rear fenders is new. But other than that, every other panel is as it came with. So yeah, we did a fair bit to it, more than we really wanted to. The roof was a terrible thing. It looked like somebody had dragged barbed wire all over it. So it took uh, Rob a bit of time to get that fixed, but yeah, it's all done there, and I'm, I'm quite happy with what Rob's done for me. I, I like a chrome bumper, and the 57 front end is such a gorgeous front end. To not have that in chrome, I think it's sacrilege. So, yeah, new bumpers all the way around, a new grille. It, it had to have it, yeah. I, all I've done, debadged it. I don't think it needs the badges to give it what it's... So it's basically like a little custom for me, yeah. I always wanted to have... Uh, I like the neon halos. These will change colour, but it's green. They've got to be green for me. So I drive with these on all the time. Uh, and, but at night, when I've driven it at night, they do work. They do really. I can actually see where I'm going. Better than a bulb. I've also got the indicators. They're also neons as well. Wheels are uh, um, American Racing Mags. Um, they are uh, uh, 9x15s. I'm changing the front ones, and I will probably change the back ones. Although they're 15-inch, they do look okay. These arches are quite big, so I think I'm going to go for 17 and a 16 on the front, different size tyres. So for now they do, but they will be changed at a later date. Oh, the windscreen wipers, yeah, they're, um, <laughs> they're brand new. Uh, there's, they are, it's supposed to be a, a, a replacement kit. It fits lovely, but they don't work very well and they're very slow and you can't really get them to be where you want them to be. Again, the mirrors, they're brand new. They originally had square oblong ones, didn't really suit the truck, I don't feel. Uh, so I went for the aftermarket round ones. Reasonably easy to get. They come from the truck store in, in the States where I bought a lot, of my, a lot of my aftermarket stuff comes from that, from that place just in California. So the, the bedwood is the original bedwood that came with this car. Whether it's the original from Dave from factory, I doubt that very much. Um, but the bedwood was in such good condition, I just decided to leave it. And the, and the chrome strips, the uh, stainless strips, they're, they're just as good as just polished them up and they've gone back in. So I've been quite lucky with the bed. Sand it all down, get it all nice and tidy. And then I stained it, several coats of stain, just to bring the colour more in line with the interior. So the interior, um, 
It wasn't that good, to, to be honest. Um, it, it had the normal gauges, uh, aftermarket gauges. And all the other bits and pieces worked. Um, but the seat wasn't an original seat. It was, an, it was a, a seat out of a, I don't even know what. But it was uncomfortable. It wasn't the right one. And this seat came across at the swap meet a couple of years back. Um, and I bought that. So it was already came uh, with, the, with the leather anyway. So I just put it in and I've I made all the panels to now match that. But this inside, it's all Dakota instruments, all brand new switches, uh, aftermarket radio uh, that fits into the panel and also uh, air conditioning, uh, vintage air, air conditioning unit in there. All the door cards, I, uh, they are original door cards um, and I had uh, a firm M&M's do clad them in the leather that I bought. I made the centre console as well. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an upholsterer, far from it. So I gave it to, to M&M for them to uh, carry out the upholstery work for me. Done a fantastic job and that's what's back in the car now but doesn't need any more than it's got. Fuel tank was behind the seat when I first got the car and didn't want it there so we took it out, we capped off, sealed off the end where the, where the hose come out through the body and we put an under, under chassis, uh, under body fuel tank in it there, 16 gallon. It's meant for the car. The awkward part is that the filler cap is now in the, in the, in the pickup bed. Other than that, it's, uh, but it's a lot more safer, I feel, it, being outside rather than behind the seat. Suspension on this car is, uh, is, is, is standard Camaro front clip from a uh, uh, Gen 2. Um, shortened springs, the two inch lowering springs in it just to drop the front down. At the back is the standard GM 10 bolt. Uh, but I had uh, a friend of mine, Keith Elliott, who's um, good at welding, better than me. He put the five bar in, uh, in suspension, uh, rear end in this. So we've got rid of the springs, we're just on shocks. They will be changed the angle, we're going to change the angle on the shocks just to get a softer ride and drop the back of the car down. Um, but other than that, it's uh, nothing clever. Was going to put air on it, just don't really need it. The cowl on the screen there, that, that was with it. Oh, I think these trucks need that cowl, they just look so good with, with it. Um, so I'm glad it had one because they are not easy to find in good condition. I would say the most awkward part was the headlining inside. It's just not easy. It's a, it's a simple thing, but the seal will drive you insane. So I didn't use it. I did something different that still works. The glass on the car, the front screen is new. Um, all the other glass is original glass. Um, all the rubbers are new. All the seals are new. Everything's new. Everything's new on this truck. If I put a video up to my friend saying, um, She's alive, the, the goblin's alive. And I don't know why I said that. It just felt right for it. And I decided that um, I'd have a, a goblin uh, mural done on the back. Um, <laughs> this guy up in Wakefield did it. So I took it to him and said oh, what, I wanted, what, it, what I was looking for. And he had no intention of doing that. He was going to do a full spread right across the tailgate. So I just left him to it. He's the artist, not me. I let him do it and he did it, it's a fantastic job, yeah. The car really for me is, a, it, I want it to be a user, a driver, a cruiser. It's not a race car, uh, it's, not a, it's not really a hot rod. Um, it's, it's my truck, I, I, I've always liked these trucks. So it's, the idea of it is I just want to drive it at weekends, go to shows, go to little meets, drive it around to the, to the pub meets and just enjoy the car. There's a few things I've got to be left to be done on it yet to get to that point but we're nearly there. I had wired this car from scratch. I mean, I did buy a wiring kit uh, and I didn't like it. So I decided I'd make my own wiring loom. And I, I know a little bit about electrics, but I've never wired a car, not everything. And I wired this one from scratch. And to be honest, I was quite chuffed with it, so I would say that's my biggest achievement on this, on this truck, is, is the wiring. I decided to take my caravan to Supernats and I'd tow it with this. It's built to tow, but it doesn't drive like it wants to. So it, although it would be okay on like 40 mile an hour and above, lovely. Go around the corners at 30 and it was, the steering was terrible, it was all over the place. I think something's to do with the steering box. 
but it scared me. And, and that, that to the point where I decided not to tow the caravan home. And, and that, because of that, uh, I actually missed taking my car to the award ceremony where I won the Shuttleworth pick at the Supernats. So although I won it, the car wasn't there at the time when I picked up the trophy. Shame that, never mind. Okay, so it's nothing like a modern car. You, although it has power steering, that's it. That's about as modern as you get. It is a, it's a clunky car. It's a farm truck. It always was. It will be a little bit better with a better suspension I'm putting on it. But yeah, it's, a, it's meant to drive around a farm. It's noisy. It's not like driving a BMW. It's not like driving anything, really. It's a farm truck. So yeah, you have to be a bit... You, you're on it. You're on it. You're thinking about it most of the time. Yeah. It's not easy. So the biggest trip I did with this, we were in Milton Keynes here, and I drove to Lincolnshire to my friend's house, and then uh, drove up to Lincoln for the car show earlier this year. So the whole trip round trip was around about 450 miles for me. That's the biggest it's done. Didn't do it all in one hit. It's got um, a fuel injection now, a holly fuel injection with their sniper kit, so, and it drives lovely. It's, it's, as far as the engine and gearbox goes, no issues. When you're on the road with this, um, it's a big car um, and people do notice it and the colour kind of gets it as well. But you get, there's a lot of people into the hot rod game uh, and you, they see you and they get the thumbs up and flashing lights and people bib at you and they're all shouting out for them and taking pictures, which is great. I mean, we don't build them because to be a shy retiring wallflower, I'm not. So we like people to appreciate what we've done and I don't mind it. So parts for this car are relatively easy to get. Um, there are a few companies here that you can go to and they may have them in stock. There's a guy in Essex that holds a lot of parts for these, these kind of trucks. But mostly my stuff was new parts, so I would order them from the States. Rock Auto was one place you can get reasonably good parts from at a good price. Uh, Speedway, Summits, and then you've got the, the truck store in California where most of my stuff has come from. But yeah, they're relatively easy to get hold of. You just pay a bit more money for it. Plans for the car. Uh, I have a new uh, front steering rack, power steering rack for it. It's in the country, just got to pick it up and fit it. I want to uh, upgrade the rear suspension, uh, make it a little bit more comfortable for drive, get rid of the, um, the rose jointed rear end and go for a poly bush just to make it a bit more comfortable and less noisy. Um, and then you know, one other thing would be the radiator, increase the size of the radi radiator a little bit. Um, it can get a little bit warm, but that's only because of the air conditioning it kind of stops a lot of the flow. So that's one of the little upgrades we've got to do this year. So I'm, I'm a member of the NSO. I've been a member for quite a few years now and <clears throat> they're a fantastic club. They put on some fantastic events across the country. They work hard for the hot rodding community. Hats off to them. They work hard and all volunteers. Nobody gets paid for this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for them, a lot of respect.